got media game of the week. So forgive me as I do it. Starting for Trinity, we got Alicia Nunley, Natalie Key Rose, as I mentioned, McKenzie, Caitlin Branton, and Eslika Fon Fonua. There is no mercy with names. Biggest keys for LD Bell as you see them warming up right now. Two D1 signees. One is Kyla Davis, number 14, signed the guard to the University of New Orleans. And Myra Gordon also signed as a D1 signee to the University of Alabama. So two prestigious universities and great to see. And as Coach Bloodworth mentioned, three the three other starting players as well are on their way to becoming D1 signees as well. So a lot of talent all the way across the board for the Lady Blue Raiders. And that will be a great show tonight as we will feature both games live and at no cost on the official apps for Trinity and LD Bell and also online at trinitysportsnetwork.com and ldbellsportsnetwork.com. So we're about 50 seconds out here from the introductions as blue and red has stormed into the arena and also a lot of purple as we, as much of the basketball nation keeps in memory of Kobe and Gigi Bryant as their tragic helicopter crash. We're going to let the announcer take it from here. starting lineups. Once again, we welcome you here to the Trinity High School Gymnasium. On behalf of Chris Lamont Karras and his administration, we thank you for joining us. A special welcome to our friends from across the way in hers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are tonight's starting lineups. First, we Lady Blue Raiders from Elmer Bell High School. Starting in Guardian 5 and 6. Serving Barney, 5'9", senior number 14, Kyla Davis. Serving Barney, 6'5", senior number 15, Andre Gore. Serving Gore.
starting lineups as both players as both teams come to their respective mid courts as I mentioned Alicia Nunley, Natalia Kiros, Mackenzie Schillemuller, Kaitlin Branton and uh, Silica Fonua for the Lady Blue Raiders we got 11 Macy Mercer 14 Kyla Davis 15 Myra Gordon Haley Rhodes, number 30, and Jaden Rhodes, the sophomore. So here we go, we're getting ready. Let's get this underway. Offensive foul gives the ball back to Trinity. One thing mentioned by Coach Spore there was the fact that he really wanted to make sure that his team was playing hard nosed defense against this team because they can score a quick 25 piece on you and you wouldn't have even scored any points yet. That's just the level of sheer talent the Blue Raiders, Lady Blue Raiders, have to offer. As we see the defense coming into fruition here, and that's something Coach Bloodworth mentioned in his pregame talk for a few minutes was just. Hard-nosed defense, he knows the talent's there. He knows that the players have the, the opportunities to sign at the D1 level as they move on, two already signed. And he just really wants to emphasize hard-nosed defense and make this rivalry game not be a, a sneak trap game as they are on a major winning streak. As a foul is called. Lady Blue Raiders are coming in on a 15-game winning streak as of right now and sit on top of the 3-6-A record with an undefeated 8-0 record. Something to keep in note is the rivalry games are famously known for being upset central so this is something where a game like this is really one that Coach Bloodworth I'm sure really emphasized to his players to just not try to overlook and and try to move on to the next game is you never truly want to do that. Bell gets the steal here and fouled hard is the University of Alabama signee Myra Gordon the six foot guard will come to the line now the senior at the 652 we're still at zero to zero as I was saying before the broadcast in the pregame keep up note we do not have the clock actively showing on the broadcast but we will just be mentioning that throughout the game as Meyer does a little quick turnaround, misses the shot. But Jaden Rose is fouled on the way up and will now shoot two free throws. So leading the way for the Lady Raiders here, keep your eyes on number 14 and 15 as I've mentioned as the first free throw does not fall. Trinity with the early two fouls. As Bell strikes first. Trinity 
trapped and fouled. Trinity with an opportunity here to get the lead. Still 6.30, about 2.30 off the clock so far. So, so far the schematics are going pretty well for Trinity. Good ball movement. They're going to call the travel, though. It's on number 14. McKenzie. Bell now with an opportunity and shots so far have not fallen for either squad. A little kick up shot there from Myra does not fall. Trinity's rebounding prevails and now gives them another chance here to try to get this lead. We're going to call the foul on the floor there at number 11 it looks like. And that would be her second. Yep, that's her second. So she will go to the bench at in comes number 10. Apologies for that. No signal issue there. We're trying to resolve that currently. Not sure what's causing that issue. There we go. That issue's been resolved. Sorry for that. So 5.30 on the clock. And now number 12, Alicia Nunley, that looks like will be charged with her second. As Bell walks up the floor now. Still a one and nothing game. And Myra will knock down the first basket here. And she now has all three points. But there will be a quick response by Trinity. Both teams just really showing out on defense so far. And a timeout on the floor. And it looks like it's going towards Bell. So 4.57 left on the clock here as we bring you the mascot media game of the week here from the beautiful Trinity High School. Historic school. As is the entire HEB ISD. Thank you to them for having us on and, and broadcasting this game. So we're happy to bring this to you and make this reality. So things to mention, the Lady, Raiders, the Lady Raiders are looking to finish strong, according to Coach Bloodworth, and build on their 25-3 record as they finish out the remaining conference play schedule, as it's just about a month and a half away, or a month and maybe even a week from being over with. An impressive 25-3 record is something they really want to try to build on here with a good marquee win against a crosstown rival. As number 14, Kyla Davis makes her presence known and knocks down a statement three to extend this lead now to six to two, the largest lead so far of the game. Is now this full court press has really started to put an emphasis onto Trinity and will cause number 30, Haley Rhodes, to come back to the line. Missed her first two free throws. Missed the first. <laughs> 
as Trinity is just trying their hardest to get out of this defense. And we'll turn the ball over again. So this is just something that Coach Spore and his staff really emphasized in the pregame was the fact they really cannot have turnovers and they need to play their hearts out in order to be competitive in this game. And so far, it's just a major issue so far as defense. As a steal from Trinity, though, gives them a chance. Good ball movement. And that will bring Trinity back within three. Is that's knocked down, and now all four points are knocked down by usual about nine points per game scorer, Alicia Nunley. Is that three is tipped, it looked like. There's no way that was normal. It's a strike down the middle. It looked like a Patrick Mahomes pass. It was knocked down by number 14, Kyla Davis. Well, it's now a nine to four game, a quick turnover again. And this gives the opportune time for Bell to continue striking as they've now really fought hard. A jump ball call is what we'll get with just about 3.23 to go here, quarter number one. Out comes Jaden Rhodes. The ball will stay in the direction of the Lady Raiders. A spot up three from way beyond the arc. No good. As now Trinity gets their ball tipped. But a three point attempt, no good. Rebound though. The play's been drawn up nicely. It's just the execution has been a little lacking so far. As Trinity's had plenty of opportunities down by five. It's not the worst scenario. Three minutes exactly on the dot here. Chance to inbound and close this lead to either within two or three. Or th three or four. Wasn't a math major if you could have figured that one out. It's Trinity desperate to try to get the ball out. Successfully so. No foul on the way up. And they're going to call a foul on the floor. Disappointed is number 10 for the Lady Raiders, Jaden Carter. Another opportune time for Trinity. Apologies for that. I had a technical difficulty. 2.18 on the clock now, 9 to 4. As a over the head pass is no good. <laughs> Now, now Bell will inbound, and so is Kyla Davis. Just under two minutes now on the clock in quarter number one. It's a spot up three will be drawn by Kyla. Now eight points. This is now the largest lead of the first quarter, 12 to 4.
Trinity inbounding. Ball is stolen though. The Trinity finds a way to get it back. Oh, I thought that was going to go for Trinity there. No good. And still, all four points have been drawn by number 12 for Trinity. And now they're just trying to find some way to get offensive execution as the ball is tipped on the inbound there and pushed out of bounds. Trinity still keeps it, though. will inbound again from midcourt. So they're going to call a timeout. So we're going to step aside with them for a few moments. Thank you for watching the Mascot Media Game of the Week as we are hosted here in Trinity High School for a good classic rivalry cross town showdown. All right, we're back. Trinity with a chance here, 15 to four, now entering under a minute for quarter number one. And still all points have been scored by Alicia Nunley for the Lady Trojans, four points so far. As the ball is yet again stolen. A little shot from the top of the, the key. And now Kyla is the first to get to double digits on the night as she alone has 10 points. A little over the shot pass there. That might have been a little, little eager from the University of New Orleans signee as she'll spot up a three. That went a little to the left, but that's okay. We didn't. If you looked on air, it didn't look like it did, so that's all right. 14 seconds on the clock, 17 to four. As a statement, first quarter has been made by the Blue Raiders in this doubleheader crosstown rivalry game. As Trinity will look to have the last chance here to score some points on the evening for the first quarter, and they will do so. And that's not a bad way to end it, as now we have a 17 to six ball game as the quarter number two comes into fruition now. Backstreet Boys kicking on. Hopefully no copyright. As we continue to bring you live here from Trinity High School as we have the Lady Blue Raiders and Trojans. Next week, if you've been following along, we'll be live at Lovejoy High School as they host McKinney North. We'll be featuring that game live on lovejoyleopards.net and their athletics app as well. But we're glad to be here tonight sh featuring this. From what I saw outside from the signage, the Crosstown Showdown, if that's what it is, or the HEB Showdown. Should have got more clarification on that. I'm sure there's a huge story behind that as this rivalry extends amongst all sports and Two communities so close to one another, you can see how much they are closely connected. This is one of the most packed arenas I've seen, especially on the home side, which you can't see. It's really great to see this much community support, as many of them are wearing purple tonight to recognize Kobe Bryant, his daughter, Gigi, and all those that were fatally killed in that tragic helicopter crash. We, many of us remember those. and. Continue to support as the Bl Lady Blue Raiders walked out with the Mamba Out t-shirt. That was something really neat to see. So we're entering into quarter number two now, 17 to six. Eight minutes thrown back up on the clock and now a chance for the Raiders to continue their striking on the offensive side. Has not been perfect though, so. 
And that will continue not to be as a quick little turnover, a little shuffle pass on the inside, whiff through the hands of number 30, Haley Rhodes. And now Trinity with their first possession of the quarter. There's a good defensive tip there from Trinity. Will knock the ball out of bounds and now force Bell to inbound. No three attempt there, no good. And a jump ball call called again. Now 7.03 in quarter number two. Still in the court for the for the Bell Raiders there is still leading scorer Kyla Davis as a what looked like a Hail Mary throw was tipped. And I'm not sure. Looks to be a foul call. We're going to call that on Kyla for her first foul. As now Trinity continues to strike. Now a 17-8 ball game. It's now number 13, Natalia. Strike and put herself on the board. This ball gets knocked out of bounds. And another opportune time here for Trinity to inbound. The ball will stay in the direction of the Trojans. Press defense was something really to take note of in the first quarter is that was something that really Bell used to take advantage and build this lead to where they have so far, but scoreless they've been in the second quarter here is now Bell's on it, or Trinity rather, is on a four to nothing run. Trying to continue that offensive momentum and try to get some more points on the board here with now just under 6.15 to go. Tipped on the inside. Trinity brings up bench players to rotate out. They're going to call a travel on the inside, number 15, Caitlin Branton. And the sub out will be number 32 in coming in, Lauren Robinson. And out will be number 14, McKenzie. As Bell looks to try to gather some offensive momentum here, just continuing with the three-point strategy. If you want to live by the three, got we willing to die by the three, and that's something that having a back swipe on that shot up. It's called frustration from Kyla. As she thought the foul should have been called there. And now Trinity with another opportunity, as you can see the two D1 signees convening just a little bit. And now out comes Kyla. Kyla with 10 of the 17, that's a big person to go to the bench now. It's just under 5.30, a chance. Maybe, yes. 17 to 10 is the immediate impact from number 32 is made. As she drops two quick points, and now get it within seven. As now the run is six to nothing. We're going to call it another jump ball in the court. And that should stay in the direction there for Trinity. And that is correct. As 
this one. Looks like the home crowd has a, sand, a, a sign to get the crowd wild here for a Sika. Or a Silica, my fault. I need to learn these names. I'm going to get them down, I promise. A Silica. It's Myra Gordon on the inside trying to body check some of the Trojan defenders. Shot up no good, but she will get two shots at the line now. It's now officially just under five minutes, 4.55 to be exact. The chance to cut this run short as it's been a 6-0 run so far by the Lady Trojans, and she will do so. Adding the first points of the second quarter here. Now three points total for Myra as the University of Alabama signee continues to try to add on some points here to make her impact known in this rivalry game. And she will knock down both. So 19 to 10. And the ball last touches the Lady Raider down there down low. So Trinity really playing some solid defense. This is potent. Lady Raider squad as the press is in full effect here. Now swapping back just a straight up man. Few traps set and Trinity breaks free. And they're gonna call the offensive foul. Everything looked right. As now that's the first there for number 23, Asilica. Her first, the freshman. Trinity with good ball movement. And the ball will be tipped out by the Lady Raiders, and now another chance for Trinity to inbound. With 4.05 on the clock. Shot from the inside of the arc, no good. And shots. Two free throws now at the line for the Lady Raiders. Bell is now scoreless still. No shots made. No field goal attempts made. Free throws, they've made two to cut the 6-0 run that Trinity was on short, but still not a single field goal made for Bell this quarter. Been a lot of three shot, no good, and a lot of inside the arc little pop-up twos have been missed, and a whole lot of turnovers. As the first one is not knocked down by Haley Rhodes, As I said, rivalry games always find a way to be interesting as it's still a 19 to 10 game. May not sound interesting, but it still is. As Haley will knock down the last free throw, giving her five points now in the evening. And what's now a 20 to 10 game. <laughs> Miss McLean could not hold the ball there. See a little frustration. Went straight through. So now a chance for Bell to kind of try to score their first field goal, honestly. And still <laughs> will not, but they will get another chance to shoot two free throws. Will Jaden Rhodes. We've played nearly five minutes in the second quarter and not a single field goal made. Because that will be the first there for Alexis. As Jaden will knock it down, giving her two points now. Two for two for three at the line. We get three for four. 
And she will knock that down. And extend this lead now back out to 22 to 10. Trinity is a little complacent until let's walk the ball out here on the top of the key, trying to set a play up. Strike on the inside. No foul call. Now Bell a chance to strike again. As Haley Rhodes will be the first Lady Raider to score a field goal. And they will match Trinity's 6-0 run to start the second quarter with a 6-0 run of their own. So a timeout, a full timeout looks to be called by Trinity. And we will take a brief timeout with them. Thank you for tuning in. Quarter number two, 2.34 to go here, 24 to 10. Bell coming off a 6-0 run here. Timeout called by the Lady Trojans. Now a chance for them to respond as they as tr Trinity will inbound. The deep pass is thrown to break through the press and land will be no good. But off the bench, Number 32 now of four points. It's Lorene Robinson. His shots continue to not fall. I'm starting to feel like the basketball just doesn't want to go in for Bell at times. It's just no shots going, free throws are being made. Just when the shot goes up, it's just not falling as a foul is called and will send Trinity to the line now as they are in the bonus. One and one though, as this is the first time we've seen Trinity at the line, I believe, unless I'm mistaken. And that first person will be none other than Natalie, Natalia, or, yeah, Natalia Kiros, or Kiros. A one and one here with just 2.09 left on the clock. But it's still a 24 to 12 game. And she will not knock down the first, but the rebound will be secured. And another jump ball will be called. So Trinity keeps the ball here, 2.05 to go. As I mentioned, do not tune out the game once you finish with the girls' game after this. We will be streaming the boys' game as well. What should be a great follow-up to this classic. As with just now under two minutes, Trinity trying to put together a solid drive here to make a good play. And the ball will not fall. It's finally a shot calls for Ruth. Now two points on the evening, 26 to 12. The ball's tipped out on the inbound from Trinity. Courtesy of Haley Rhodes there with the tip. And 
Now through the thick crowd on the home side, you can see the Trinity with a chance to try to inbound. Loretta having to direct fans to stop moving. Ball will get tipped out again by Bell. The three is up there, no good. A little inbound though. I'm gonna call a jump ball again and that should go back in the direction of Bell here. And it's so. So a minute 14 now left on the clock. Now nearly under 30 seconds. 30 now. Shot up, no good. Now it looks to be a last chance here. The ball, the teams collide there for the ball and they will give it in the direction of Bell. So now you would presume Bell will have the last shot here as we enter the half. But you never know with high school basketball, things just happen sometimes. And now we're under 10 seconds as the ball is stolen again by Trinity. And overthrown and back in the hands of Bell with 5.6 seconds remaining. As we look to be going to half with a 26 to 12 score here, unless Bell makes a quick little two or three. Now lying down four, three, two, one. Nearly in. So that's how we're going to round out the first half. We will just put a timer up with the graphic as you saw earlier in the pregame. Up counting down as the boys will warm up and the music will play. So thank you for tuning in the first half. We'll be back shortly with the second half of action. You're watching the Mascot Media Game of the Week live from Trinity High School.
Welcome back. As we get ready for the second half here, Trinity will be inbounding the ball to start. A few key storylines. Bell has not been shooting well with all the active firepower they possess. They have not been really knocked that out as they were held scoreless with field goals made for nearly over six minutes to start. Finally knocks them down near the end and Trinity hanging their head on defense but have just made a couple really tough offensive turnovers as you see there, a little miscommunication. That is not something you want to see when you're playing against a team as talented as Bell. So Trinity though had a 6-0 run there in the second second quarter. To make a little bit of a push to bring us to our closest game at seven points. And so now a chance for them to try to add some of that magic in this rivalry showdown. As I apologize for the continued miss signal here on the the court. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but we will continue to look into that as Bell now inbounds. But just under 7.20 to go. Still a 26-12 ball game. Trinity just continues to be pressed as hard as possible. Good ball movement, though. Chance for a three there, not taken. No backcourt violation since Bell did get a tip on the ball. Just now under 6.30. Quarter number three. Trinity a chance to inbound again. Still 26 to 12 though. As a three a shot, no good. His three pointers really have not fallen all night for either squad. A couple early makes. As now number 32, Maureen Robinson. Well, sorry, apologies. Jaden Rhodes continues to have a, a great night. Now five points total. This is now a 28-12 game. As I'm not sure. Shots up and no good, so now a chance. For Bell to have two shots. We're fixing the Trinity score now. It is 28 to 12, not 28 to 14. As now we'll see Myra Gordon back in with five total points and she'll knock down the first. Make it 29 to 12. Doing her. Having some substitutions in for Trinity. As this now ties the largest lead of the game so far, with just now about 5.30 on the clock. And Myra will knock down the next. She now sits with six points on the evening. Right behind leading scorer, 
Kyla Davis. Trinity really just tries to put together a solid offensive setup here. Three up and away, and will get knocked down. A shot there from McKenzie finally to fall. Now it's a 30 to 15 game and a quick response from Kyla. And that will cause a timeout on Trinity's side. Is what looked to be possibly a spark was imme immediately diminished. As we now have a 33 to 15 ball game and also the largest lead of the evening at 18. Both teams playing their hearts out though. This is great to see in a crosstown rivalry game. for all the camera signal disturbances as we continue to try to get those resolved. As Trinity will inbound with now 445 left on the clock and a quick steal by Bell. Inside the arc shot, no good. You wouldn't believe it, but another jump ball called on the inside. And the ball will stay in the direction of the Lady Raiders. Now a 33 to 15 ball game. And you almost felt like Kyle was kind of heat checking herself there and a jump ball will be called again and will go in the direction of Trinity. But now what is 428 on the clock? Shot up, no good. That now gives the opportunity for Caitlin Branton to get two free throws at the line. To cut into what is now a 18 point lead. Now the second foul on Miss Jaden Rhodes for Bell. She will knock down the first. And that is actually her first point of the evening. And we'll miss the second. Inbounding is Haley Rhodes for Bell. With now what is 4.10 left on the clock. And an and one called down low as Jaden will knock down the two and now a chance for another. And that is now the fourth for Miss Robinson on Trinity side, the sophomore. As it's now 36 to 16, apologies for the score mess up there. With now 355 to go on the clock. It's a hard collision on the inside. Journey just finding, trying to find any way to get an open look here. With no shot clock though, the ball gets picked. First shot won't go, the second will, courtesy of Miss Rhodes, as she now has 10 on the evening, three shy of the leading scorer 
Miss Davis. And now Trinity catching a little bit of the LD Bell bug from last quarter. No field goals being knocked down. And now Macy Mercer will have her first tray of the evening. And now extending it to the largest lead by far, 41 to 16. Now just under 2.30. Ball will be tipped out by Bell. So Trinity now with another opportunity here to get a solid play set up here. As the score is now corrected on the broadcast as well. 41 to 16 as I mentioned. 2.29 left to go here. Inbounding will be, I can't read numbers, number 10, Trinity. gets intercepted on the inside by Bell. And a little lay in there for maybe the shortest girl on the court, the 5'6 guard. Now with five on the evening, 43 to 16. And according to the stat sheet, she is the smallest. That's impressive. And a three will be called up by Miss Alexis McLean. She will have her first points on the evening. Oh, 43 to 19 ball game. But every time, I, I literally think she waits. She waits to knock down a three until Trinity decides to knock one down. That's just disheartening. <laughs> I, I wish I would have. I wish I was that good of a stat keeper to track that, but I think every single time Trinity has hit a three, she has gone back down and knocked down a three herself. So that's just the kind of offensive power you expect from a sign a D1 signee going to the University of New Orleans and also from Myra, the University of Alabama signee. Now Miss Jaden Rhodes gets fouled on the inside with a chance at two free throws. Foul is called on number 15 for Trinity, Caitlin Branton. And that's now her third foul. Team foul number four. With now a minute to go, as now it's 47 to 19. And now you're just, you're seeing Bell's full talent just put on full display now. It's now under 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. This game has really started to open up wide. The foul looks to be called on this home side of the court. Trinity did keep it close for a good majority of this game. And obviously we still have another quarter of play. But you've really started to see the stars for Bell really turn on here in the third quarter, especially as a cold second quarter was really on display. Kind of disheartening as his, you know, Coach Coach Bloodworth really kind of emphasized the amount of talent on this team, as even the other three starters outside of the two senior signees 
have the potential easily to be D1 signing. So it's just it's crazy to see how quick they can just flip the switch. As we now go under 18 seconds remaining here. A little Hail Mary thrown and picked off again. And it looks to be a hard foul there on the inside and we'll send number 20, Jaden Carter, to the line as she now, as she has two points on the evening. What is now a 50 to 19 ball game with just now six seconds to go. Make it 51 to 19. And she will knock down Bo, giving her two points now in the evening. Or four. I actually learned how to count. And that's the way the quarter's going to end. So we're going to go to the final eight minutes on the clock here. 52 to 19. The game really opened wide. After halftime, as Trinity's offense felt just fully depleted. And Kyla Davis just decided to turn it up a notch. So we're going to take a brief time out with them, leave the, leave the video on with the score, and I'll be back in a few minutes. And we're back. Bell will inbound for what will be our final eight minutes of part one of our double header on the evening. As we will be covering the boys game as well. There's a little pop up too there, no good from Miss Carter. Is Bell. And that tray is no good. Trinity continues to hold Bell scoreless here. But we're showing a little frustration. Even during a 52 to 19 ball game, you still see him getting on the coaches just a little bit. Just to just let him know he's still there. He's been quiet. If you're a coach, you, you never want to let the refs know you're not there. Always keeping a close eye on him. There's a little hook shot. No good. As Kyle is looking for the foul call there on the inside of the arc. Bell Trinity throws one up, and the second one's going to fall. So now 52 to 21. And that's now seven points on the evening for Miss McKenzie. As Bell is still content with just trying to ride the score in this rivalry game. Yeah. 
and now 20 points on the evening. For Miss Davis. Because they're gonna call an over the back there on number 10 for Trinity, or number 12, apologies. So can't read numbers. With 5.54 left to go on the clock here. It actually looks like it's gonna send number 11 Macy Mercer with five on the night so far to the line for a one and one, looks like. As they are on the bonus now, as that is the seventh team foul for Trinity. And she will knock down the first, the front one of the one and one. As the five six freshman gets another shot in and will miss the second. But an offensive rebound secure. Another jump ball looks to be called. And that is it. So 548 left on the clock now. Call a travel on the inside there on Trinity on Miss Ruth, the junior. And now, with just 526, Bell firm control of this one now up 34. Content with just walking this one up the court. Spot up three, no good. Offensive rebound. And you wouldn't have guessed it. Another jump ball call. I think that might be like the 15th or 16th jump ball. I've seen plenty of those today. Bell intercepts another pass. Deep throw. And a little teardrop pass made there by Miss Kyla. Now 22 points. And a little miscommunication on the offensive side of the ball there for Trinity. And now we have 428 left to go here for quarter number four. So as the starters begin to sub out now, what well, looks to be the last time we will see Miss Davis for Bell in the evening. She has a 22 point leading score campaign for this rivalry matchup and we'll start to see some of the backups here for now. This is a three is missed. But last tipped out by Trinity. But just now 4.15 on the clock. Three's up, no good, but an offensive rebound secured. Offensive rebounding really has taken full control on the Bell side, maybe just due to exhaustion or just, just for bench possibly. It's a shot up there. Somehow, Ira Gordon Managed to shoot the ball, missed it, was down on the floor, got the rebound, shot it back out to her teammate, gets another rebound, and she's going to get the and one. Yep, they're going to give her the and one now. As she now has eight, and now a chance to have nine. As we now are at 59 to 21. And she will knock down the 
three-point play to make it 60 to 21. They're going to call a foul on the inside. That will send Miss Branton to the line. Two free throws. Trying to add on to her one-point evening so far. As she been playing a little, a little bit more safe as she's had four, team, four fouls for a good part portion of the second half. Now with just 3.38 left on the clock. She will miss the front half. As another portion of the starters have exited for the evening for Bell. And she will knock she will not knock down either. Now under three minutes. And a pass goes directly over the head of number 30, the junior, Desiree Cook. Bell looking slightly slower paced now. But still trying to score. Still trying to put it on him in this rivalry game. Wouldn't expect any less from a rivalry game, especially if one is as close to a rivalry game as it can get, really. A strike to the inside to the to the to the rim will result in two shots for Miss Haley Rhodes. Trying to add on to her seven point campaign on the evening so far with just now what is 2.27 on the clock. And she will knock down the first. And she will knock down both, so now sitting at nine points for the evening. As that will Allow her to exit for the evening on a nine point campaign with what is now 225 remaining. And a good shot off the glass, three point knockdown. A little spark there for Miss Cook as she will knock down her first points of the evening, three. Now a minute 50 remaining. And there will not be a response this time. Yet. And that will sail past. It's the bench. <laughs> Well, I must Carter know of her, her shot quality there. We've now entered under a minute 30. Another three up and no good as Bell will fight for the rebound. Good ball movement. But the shot will not fall. They're going to call it jump ball again now. Officially one second over a minute remaining here in the fourth quarter. What appears to be a Bell victory for round one of this crosstown rivalry on the court. 
And this will move Bell up to a 16 game winning streak now. It also improved them to 9-0 in district play. And this will bring Trinity down to a 4-5 overall record. With still plenty of games to play. Still trying to ride some momentum to, to make a run here in district play. And just kind of ran into a, a full steam engine in Bell. As this team is just loaded with talent this year. The ball gets knocked out. Now officially under a minute, 49 seconds remaining. As the crowds continue to storm in as Bell's side is now completely filled to the rim as well. And that ball will fall out. 36 seconds remaining. 62 to 24. As Trinity secures the ball and had a battle a little bit there for a little bit. Now we've entered under 10 seconds. Now this will be the last shot, it appears, for Trinity as they will finish the evening. We might have an injured bell. That is number five, Kennedy Wright. Hope she's okay. As she played a major role in what is now an official 62 to 24 victory over the Lady Trojans. So we're gonna be back, there's 15 minutes on the clock here. We will be broadcasting the boys game as well shortly after this. So as they warm up, we're gonna take a timeout and get ready for that. So thank you for tuning in to the Mascot Media Game of the Week Part 1 in this girls' rival reaction, and we'll be back just in time for the introductions and national anthem for the boys. <laughs> 